We started down this road, and I, I took a couple sidetracks, but seems like the Holy Spirit put it in my heart, Jumpstart Nation, for us to come back over here and camp in this, this again, this session about the righteousness of God. You are righteous. You stand in the presence of God uh, as if you have never sinned. Let me read it. It is the it is the ability to stand in the presence of God as if you've never sinned. That's amazing. Uh, it is to stand before God without a sense of guilt or shame or condemnation or even a sense of inferiority. God wants a face-to-face fellowship with you. He wants a heart-to-heart, face-to-face fellowship. All right. Ephesians 2 says we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means you are you are on fellowship terms. You're, you're not praying up. Oh, God, up in heaven. God literally is in your spirit. That's why you bow your head to pray to talk to God that's inside of you. And I think sometimes we still have a religious, Old Covenant, Old Testament, mental picture of what it means to pray, and it means to pray up to a distant God up in the heavens. Nothing could really be further from the truth. God now is in you. God is in you. You can have a conversation. Oh, that was a hijacking. Woo-wee. Okay. We're going to do Job, but we're going to go to Romans first. So if your image of prayer is is calling upon the God that's way up in heaven, yes, he is up in heaven. But Jesus brought a brand new covenant. He brought a brand new, we still underestimate what happened. A brand new covenant where we are in his class of being. We are in the God class of being. We're not gods, but we're in the God class. We are now sons of God. Daughters. Of God. That means you have God's DNA spiritually. You have God's genetics. We now fellowship with God on equal terms. Now, I don't mean you are God. I'm not saying you are God or gods. That's not what I'm saying. But you're now in the God family. You're in the family of God. <clears throat> that means you're in the God family. You are a divine human being. You have the divine nature. We've still underestimated this, and we we hear the word righteousness, and some of us have heard it so much, we've almost just kind of made a cliche out of it, but we have really got to get a hold of of this picture. So if this picture is you praying and calling upon God, or you're worshiping on Sunday morning. I've been dealing with this at our church. Hoping that God's presence will come sweeping in. You're still praying and living under condemnation. You're living in the old covenant. You're still, you're still trying to summons God. You're under condemnation. You're living in the old covenant. You're still, you're still trying to summons God. You're still trying to enter into his presence or get him to enter into your presence and all of that stuff is old covenant it's unrighteousness it's condemnation man man praise god so romans chapter 8 uh this is a phenomenal verse we're going to eventually cover every uh the first 18 verses in romans 8 as we go through this series on righteousness we might camp here for a year i don't know 
Um, but I'm telling you, righteousness doesn't just mean forgiven. It is a complete change of humanity. It is a fundamental change of, of humanity. The Bible says, if any man be, any man or woman be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, we've, we've underestimated that verse. Here's how we've read this verse. If any man or woman be in Christ, he's a new creation. Hallelujah. I get a brand new start. Man, I get a, I, I'm forgiven of my past, and I just get a brand new start. It didn't say if any man be in Christ, he gets a brand new start. Same person with a new start. Same person with a new slate. Didn't say you get a brand new slate. He said you are an entirely new creation. Now, the Greek language has more than one word that can be translated new. And this Greek word, kainos, K-A-I-N-O-S, means new in the sense of it's never existed before. Not new in age. Like, well, you know, somebody may have, uh, you know, oh, that's a new car. I mean, that's the latest model. But the fact is, cars have existed for decades. It's just a new version of car. It's, you know, so, hey, you got the, you got the newest model of Corvette. You got the newest version. You got the new Corvette or the new Camaro or the new whatever. Well, it's, it's still a car. It's just a new version of car. It's not a Model T. And so when we, when we confess, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, we kind of think, well, it's a new version a new version of me. What the Holy Spirit is saying when he says you are new, kainos, you are a type of humanity that has never existed ever before. It's a, it's, it's a totally different, I don't want to say animal, but speaking figuratively, you're a completely different, you're a species of humanity That's never existed before. Satan looks at you and and thinks, how did God do that? This is is completely new, completely different. Not an iteration of an old thing. You're not not humanity 2.0. You're a humanity that's never existed before. Man. And then it goes on to say, if I've been hijacked. Wow. We're not even in Job. If, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. And we've interpreted this as, well, my past is gone. Hallelujah. Thank God my past is gone. I get a brand new start. I get a clean slate. Thank God old things are passed away. Now, this word old is the Greek word paleos. We get paleo. Paleo. And really what he says is the old version, the ancient version of humanity, the the old conditions from Adam up to the resurrection are gone. There is a brand new condition. There's a brand new thing happening that's never happened before. You are an absolute miracle. When we say you're the righteousness of God in Christ, even angels shudder at it. They're like, how did, how did you convert this? Per- how did this God, this is amazing. This is new. This is something new, man. Old things have passed away. The, the old way of living, the old humanity, paleo man, the old man, the old type of humanity is gone. You, you live in a completely different realm than an unsaved person. You live in a completely on a completely different plane than a person that's not born again. Then he says, Behold, all things are new. Behold, all things are new. Notice he says, Behold, look, pay attention, take a look, look at it. What's he saying? All things are are new. It doesn't just mean you have a new slate. It means you are in a complete different human race. 
Now listen to me. There are two types of humans on the earth right now. There's paleo man, the man that's not born again. He's just a, an, an iteration of Adam. He's just a, a descendant of Noah, of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Paleo man, okay? But there is a new type of humanity. There's a new type of human on the earth that has never existed before that angels absolutely are blown away by it, and so is Satan and demons. They, 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 they're amazed, okay? And we are a type of human, even more than Adam and Eve, we literally have received the God nature in us, a new creation that's not dependent on our obedience. Now, when God breathed into Adam and Eve, it was still maintained by their performance. God said, don't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you're going to die. We now have received a nature and a new, new, new hum, we are a new humanity, a new type of race uh, that is not based on my obedience. It's based on the obedience of Jesus. He ate of the tree of death which became the tree of life. Now, many people, and, and so it's based on Jesus. It's not based like Adam. It, he could lose it. If you're in Christ and you stay in Christ, you cannot lose your righteousness if you stay in Christ, if you elect to do that. Okay? It's not dependent on your obedience. It's dependent on his. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new type of humanity. This is amazing. You still don't we, we still don't really know who we are in the spirit realm and even in our bodies. We don't understand that there's been fundamental change in our bodies. Uh, old things, the old way of living, old humanity. You see, if you're not careful, you're a new type of humanity trying to live by the logic, the logos of old humanity. Here's old humanity's mathematics. Two plus two equals four. Now, that's true in the natural, but have you ever noticed that God has a way of meeting your needs that does not add up in your checkbook? Have you ever noticed that God knows how to meet your needs and supply an, uh, more than enough, and it didn't make sense mathematically? There's a new system on the earth that goes beyond natural reasoning, that goes beyond natural logos. See, the Bible says, man, I'm getting way out here, but the, the Bible says this. The Bible says Jesus was the Word, the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. The, we get the word logic from the word Logos, which we translate word. So here's what God did. Satan got involved with Adam and got all kinds, and Satan gave Adam, Satan gave Adam, his logos, his logic. Eat the tree, dude. Eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because God's holding out on you. He's holding back, and I've got some mystery knowledge for you. Eat of the fruit of the tree, and you'll discover this mystic knowledge. Woo! Which ended up being knowledge about his nakedness. It's a trick. That was Satan's logos. Now, fast forward, and you come to John 1.1. 1, 1, Jesus comes into the earth, and God introduces the word the Logos. God introduces His logic into the earth. His way of thinking. His way of doing. His way of dealing. Jesus was the new type of logic. The new type of Logos. Praise God. It's based on faith. It's supernatural. So if you try, and logos is uh, also, we get the word logismos. It's a counting term to account for something, to count things and to write them down. Jesus is also, God introduced a new accounting system, which means $2 is not $2 in the kingdom of God. $2 inside a dollar is a a pile of dollars. Inside of an acorn is a forest. Inside of a dollar, when it's a seed, 
is a forest of money. There's a new accounting system. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature operating on a new logos, a new logical system, and a new accounting system, a new logismos. Old things, the old way of doing things is done with the new creation. Behold, all things are new. How we operate is a completely new game. We're operating on a new logic. We're operating on a new accounting system. And I'm telling you, we got to get this. It's not just a new slate. Praise God. And then the next verse says, Behold, all things are of God. All things of these things, all that... All of this new creation and the old humanity going and the new humanity coming in, you're a new type of humanity. All of this is of God. You did not make it yourself. You didn't educate yourself to the point of getting there. You didn't get so smart that you became this. You didn't become so holy that you became this. You were made it by God. It was the working and you are the outworking, the working of God. You are God's logic with skin wrapped around it. And let me tell you something. God's logos doesn't make sense in the realm of the old paleo humanity. It doesn't make sense. Give money away and you'll have more? What? Lay hands on a sick person and they'll be healed? What? You guys are nuts. Well, we're nuts in the paleo world, but we're not nuts in the kainos world. This new order of humanity, laying on of hands is the best therapy to heal the sick. Also, speaking the word, speaking the logos of God. See, there is a medical logos. There's a medical logic in God's mind. There's a medicine, a medical logos that's different than paleo man's logos about medicine. Paleo man says, cut the thing out, throw it away, cut that organ out, get rid of it. God's medical logos is lay hands on the sick and speak the word over it. Anoint it with oil. Put an anointed cloth on it. Speak the word. Man, we have to understand as the righteousness of God, we operate on a completely different logical system. The new logos. The new accounting system. Logismos. Man, this is awesome. Say this out loud. Because I am in Christ... I'm a completely new type of humanity. I am a species of humanity that's never existed before. I operate on a completely different logical system. The logic of the kingdom of God. The logic of God. I operate on the word system not the world system. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Paleo ancient thinking has passed away. I have a new type of thinking that fits a new type of humanity. (laughs) <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> oh, man, say it out loud. I am beholding and looking into who I am and who God is. And I am being transformed on the outside to fit this new logic on the inside. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh man, you know, you know, you know, faith and reason are not, they don't work. Faith is the reasoning of the new man. Faith acting on the word of God, speaking the word of God, forgiving your enemies, humbling yourself, going down to go up, giving to increase. I'm telling you, it's a different type of logic, but it supersedes paleo logic ancient logic, the logic of Adam's race. There's a new nation on the earth. We are a holy nation. Praise God. That is awesome. Praise, praise, praise God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Man, so speak the word, right, Sharon? Speak the word. Speak God's logic. You know, when when in the world's logic, you know, when symptoms hit your body, you go around talking about the symptoms and and all that. But in the logic of righteousness, you begin to declare the word of God. You say, This is what the word of God says. This is who I am. This is what I have. This is me. I, I'm not I'm not listening to the physical realm like that. I'm listening to the word of God. Amen. It's so good. So Here's what you have to know about the Word. God told Adam and Eve, don't eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you'll die. And then there was a tree of life. The cross became the new tree of life. Now, here's what I want you to hear. God did not send Jesus to make bad men good. He sent Jesus to make dead men live. Wow. I mean, wow. If that didn't get you, I don't know what will get you. It's amazing to me. I want to say it again. Jesus did not come to make bad men good or immoral men moral. He came to make dead men live. And out of that new life, a supernatural morality flows called the love of God. A supernatural goodness flows called the gifts of the Spirit. A supernatural morality flows out of our new life called the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5. A supernatural goodness flows called the gifts of the Spirit. Many people think that their goodness will lead to being righteous in God's eyes, but the opposite is true. Receiving God's righteousness causes you to begin to perform supernatural goodness. Dead works are your efforts to impress God, but they're still done by a spiritually dead man. Dead works are not fruit. Fruit comes because of life. When a man or woman is born of God, born again, become the righteousness of God, they begin to manifest supernatural fruit a supernatural morality and a supernatural goodness called the gifts of the Spirit. We should be passing out gifts of the Spirit all the time, not just in church. Gifts of healings, passing them out. Working of miracles in people's finances. We need to begin to produce the good works. Praise God. Amen. That is awesome. Praise God forever. Now, Romans chapter 8. Say this out loud. God didn't just make me good. He made me live. And out of this new life, fruit flows. The fruit of life flows out of me. Out of this, say this out loud, out of this new life, supernatural gifts flow. Now make this confession. I'm a major blessing. Wherever I go, I am a major blessing. I heard the word financial miracle worker. Uh, Nancy, did you hear that? Financial miracle worker. That's all I got. I can't elaborate. That's all I I saw. A, a, a working of miracles. One of the nine manifestations of the Spirit is the working of miracles, and the, and the other is the gift of faith, which involves financial, supernatural intervention. I hear the Lord saying, there are gifts in, within the nine gifts of the Spirit. There are gifts and manifestations that create financial miracles, and it's a different kind of logic, and that revelation is coming strong now. Yeah, thank God. We act on the Word. Now, I'm not against it. We act on the Word of God. We act on giving. That's right. Sowing, reaping, giving, receiving, confessing, all that kingdom realm. But in that kingdom are gifts of the Spirit, working of knowledge, word of not, working of miracles, word of knowledge. And I heard the Spirit of God. I saw it. He's, he's, I heard him. I'm going to say it again. Financial miracle workers. This is what God is doing in somebody. I don't know if it's me or you or someone. It's awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nancy, 
financial miracle workers. All right? There are gifts and manifestations of the Spirit. See, we've limited them. I'm speaking by the Spirit of God right now. I'm prophesying without saying yandai, shandai. That we have limited the gifts of the Spirit primarily to gifts of healings, miracles of the body. I'm hearing the Lord saying this right now. Lord, you're hijacking this. Man, I hear the Spirit of the Lord and I see the, the Lord saying, but the nine gifts of the Spirit work in the realm of material things also. They work in the realm of money. They work in the realm of provision. Have you not read, my prophet went to the brook Cherith, and I supernaturally provided for him, intervening in the laws of nature, and by the gift of faith operating in the prophet, the ravens brought the food to him supernaturally. And have you not read, says the Lord, that when the brook dried up, I gave a word of wisdom to the prophet, and he found a poor woman, not logically able to provide for the preacher, but I sent him to the most unlikely person, and I worked a miracle by gift of faith, working of miracles, that not only kept the ministry solvent, but caused the woman to walk in the supernatural provision of the gifts of the Spirit. I see, and again, I see financial miracles, financial miracle workers. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. And what's the key? What's the key? Hearing, hearing and seeing. The prophet saw, the prophet heard and went to the brook and there by gift of faith received the miracle of provision. What then happened? The brook dried up, the resources dried up, the bank account dried up, what do you want? Everywhere, whatever you want to say, it dried up and he got a word of wisdom and was led by the Spirit to the woman. Found the woman making her last meal. The key to the supernatural is not just trying to do something, it's hearing and then doing what you hear and doing what you see. This is where the Lord is leading us. Don't limit the gifts of the Spirit to, to physical healing. There are financial miracles, miracle workings of miracles in the nine gifts of the Spirit. Praise God. And this belongs to the new creation with the new type of logic. This belongs to the righteous ones who live above the realm of economy, who live above it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Yeah, you are a blessing distribution center. Amen, Diana. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Katola bikala brospa devite. Zizamalana moshanga. Ata ata bataketa bo oto kasada. Yemos amakas abidas abadas kadoa asa adama levidia. Yep, yep. Seko pangina teste. Yes, the word of the Lord will come through the Bible. Yes, words of wisdom will come as. Scriptures will come off the page, says the Lord. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge will come from the Scriptures. Yes, yes. But words of knowledge and directions all come, also come out of your spirit by the Spirit of God. Heed the leading of the Spirit. Heed the Word of God. Listen to the words and the, the revelations and the promptings of your spirit. And I will lead you into a place of great blessing both blessed and a blessing that will astound the devil and demons. Angels will be thrilled and the kingdom of God will be increased in the face of opposition. Thank you, Father. Man, that's good. Well, I want to finish with Romans chapter 8. I said this, this idea of us praying up to this God in heaven. Yeah, he's up there, but he's in us. And then this is what I heard in Romans 8. It said, and then we're done. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the sons of, uh, by the Spirit of God, they are the, they are the sons of God. And then he goes on to say in verse 16, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. There is a witness of the Holy Spirit in your spirit, you have a knowing, a witness. It may not be words, it's a witness. You have this witness in your spirit 
that's in there by the Holy Spirit that you're a child of God. But that witness will also bear witness with other things, which aren't really words, but it's an inner witness of go do this. There'll be a prompting to do that. There'll be a prompting to give here. There'll be a prompting to read this church verse. There'll be a prompting to read that chapter in the Bible. There'll be a prompting to pray in the Spirit for a minute. There'll be a prompting to call someone. There'll be a prompting to sow here and sow there. It's a witness. But here's what I want you to see. The Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit is in your spirit. Now listen. And the minute the Holy Spirit thinks a thought in you, your spirit is thinking the thought. Your, your spirit and the Holy Spirit are so intertwined, when the Holy Spirit thinks, you automatically think it. That's how tight you are. So if we get this idea of we're just praying up to God in heaven, way up there, hey God, we start ignoring this union in our spirit. The minute the Holy Spirit thinks it inside of you, you thought it. Man, woo, we need to pick up on the thoughts and the the uh, the witness of the Spirit. He's leading you someplace really good. Why? Because you are the righteousness of God. Say this out loud. The Holy Spirit himself is bearing witness with my spirit. The minute he thinks it in me, my spirit picks up on it. His thoughts are my thoughts. That's why you've got to be careful quoting Old Testament prophets. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. His ways are higher than mine. His thoughts are higher than mine. Wait a minute. The minute the Holy... See, that's, that's in the Old Testament before the Holy Ghost was in people. But in the New Covenant, His thoughts are in your spirit. It's just your mind has got to get connected with that dynamic duo in there. Sometimes our minds are so distracted by stuff, we're not picking up on this conversation going on in our spirit. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit are so entwined that the minute the Holy Spirit thinks it, you think it in your spirit. Now it's renewing your mind and learning to not be so distracted that we miss out on it. Praise God. I love you guys. Have an awesome rest of your day. I did not either, Jana. I want to grow in my fellowship with my own spirit. I want to get more sensitive to this conversation going on in my spirit. He'll prompt you. He'll prompt you to do things. He'll prompt you to say things. He'll prompt you to give money to ministries or people or whatever. He'll prompt you to pray and so that accidents are averted. He'll prompt you to, to love someone that needs a hug or a handshake or maybe somebody at the store. You'll have this, this thought, this witness come up in you. It's the Holy Spirit thinking that person needs encouragement that person needs to be loved man love you guys have an awesome rest of the day we'll see you tomorrow